get through the day. Um, it's kind of like sleep is a drug, the bed is a drug dealer, and the police is the alarm clock. Um, in order to understand what we're all missing out on, um, let's look deeper into what sleep is. Um, so to understand sleep, we need to look at biological and circadian rhythms. Um, and so everybody has their own internal clocks, also known as their biological clocks. Um, and according to Mark Hawk in the paper Circadian Rhythms, our brain clock regulates everything from hormone levels, urine, volumes, blah, 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 blood pressure, and etc. Um, these brain clocks can be influenced by external and internal me me mechanisms. Um, and so these can be anything from sunlight, sound, which is external, and internal would be anything that's going on inside of you. Um, and another person named Perez Levy, who is a researcher, um, states in a journal called REM in Narcoleptic Patients, um, states that when we use external time mechanisms um, or cues, like sunlight or sound, uh, we synchronize to a 24-hour um, circadian rhythm, uh, which is what all of us function on. Um, if we don't have these external time cues, our bodies revert back to something called an endogenous rhythm, which is um, anything that is generated without a time cue. And so how they research this is um, they shut people in like a cave without any, um, like they didn't have access to what was going on outside. And so researchers would come in at various hours during the day um, to, pro to provide food and water and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so they observed over like a two week time period about how these people um, reverted back to their endogenous, endogenous rhythms. Um, and it was pretty close to 24 hour, but that's only because um, we're so used to that, that people had to adopt. Um, and there's a part in our brain called the suprachiasmatic uh, nucleus, um, which is the overall coordinator or um, master clock of our body, and it dictates that circadian rhythm. Um, and it gathers information from the hypothalamus, which is located right there, somewhere here. Um, and um, basically, it regulates hormone and neurotransmitter levels by responding to changes in light and dark. And so basically when you um, go to sleep in the dark, hopefully, um, melatonin levels increase. And melatonin is a hormone that regulates um, your sleep. And it helps you fall asleep and helps you stay asleep. Um, and when it becomes lighter outside, melatonin levels fall and this helps you wake up. Um, and the change in melatonin level um, it's fed back and forth through the uh, SCN, which is the suprachiasmatic neuronucleus, um, and it helps you keep in phase with the light and dark cycles throughout the day. Um, and so to further understand sleep, we should look at the stages. Um, and so taking research from a paper called Sleep, Sleep Disorders, and Biological Rhythms from VSCS, um, we see that there are five stages, um, and let's go into the first one. So stage one, um, this is when you're first trying to fall asleep, and it comes very suddenly. It's very, it's not gradual, um, so you'll knock out automatically, and um, this is when your brain waves are small and irregular. So they're still trying to find their way to something called a delta wave, um, and so in stage one, you're drifting between consciousness, so you're still like kind of getting there. Um, stage two lasts about two minutes, and your brain waves, brain waves come in um, short bursts, um, something called sleep spindles, and so. This means like it looks really crazy like this, and then it'll go like a little plateau and then go crazy. Um, but you're still in that unconscious state, but not fully unconscious. Um, in stage three, this lasts about for 20 minutes, and um, your brain waves look similar to what they would in stage two. Um, but you'll have the occasional delta waves, like I mentioned earlier, uh, which are very um, they're slow waves, but with very high peaks. Um, and in this stage it gets harder to wake somebody up. Uh, so this would be considered starting to get into the deeper sleep stage. Um, stage four is the deeper one, and it lasts about an hour. Um, the brain waves are all delta waves, and um, the, you'd be, you would describe somebody in stage four as out cold. So you wouldn't be able to wake them up with any sound or any movement. Um, yeah. And then the last stage, uh, stage five, is also known as rapid eye movement stage, um, REM sleep. This lasts about 30 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on your body. And these brain, wa brain waves um, look very similar to when you're actively awake. Um, and your heart rate starts to increase, and um, your body starts twitching, but for the most part, you lose muscle tone throughout um, as you get deeper and deeper into REM. Um, and your breathing becomes faster, 
And it's it's a really weird state if you observe somebody in REM because you'll see their like eyeballs like going back and forth underneath their eyelids. Um, it's kind of creepy. Um, but if you're woken up during REM stage, then you'll most likely remember the dreams that you're having. Um, and so most people experience three to five intervals of REM sleep each night if you're getting the eight to nine hours that you need, which you know we're not. Um, <laughs> and every 90 minutes or so, um, um, you'll have a dream that lasts about 20 minutes. Um, and so to answer the question, why do we sleep? According to Rotsi in his paper, Neurobiology, What Drives Flies to Sleep, um, sleep varies across um, different species, and while we're not entirely sure why we sleep yet, um, throughout some research, it's most likely because we need to rejuvenate, um, grow muscle, repair <coughs> tissues, um, and this is how our body gets rid of trash in the muscles. Um, and um, we have to synthesize hormones within ourselves to balance that out too. Um, and it helps to store memories from our short term into long term while we're sleeping. Um, and it also has shown that with more sleep, you get improved problem solving. Um, and so a lot of us don't get enough sleep, but it's not necessarily because um, we're procrastinating on speeches or um, <laughs> anything like that. Um, sometimes it can be because of a disorder. Um, and so we're going to look at two today. The first one is sleep apnea, and this is where your throat or your windpipe is blocked um, while you're sleeping suddenly. And um, because it's because it's obstructed, your breathing stops for a couple of moments, and this can be really dangerous because um, there's not enough oxygen getting into your body. Um, and this results in high blood pressure and irregular heartbeat. Um, the second one is narcolepsy, and this is where you have irresist irresistible and unpredictable um, daytime attacks of sleepiness. And this is caused by degeneration in the nerve cells in the hypothalamus, and also it has to do with genetics. Um, and this last, these sleeps last around from five to 30 minutes, and it affects around 250,000 Americans. So it's not too common, but um, it does happen. And um, sleep deprivation, I think we can all relate. Um, it can be caused by worry, anxiety, physical problems, uh, demanding work, um, physical schedule, caffeine, drugs, alcohol. Um, and so in the book, Sleep, Sleep Disorders and Biological Rhythms, again, um, they talk about how um, with sleep deprivation, it lowers attention, and there's less, less mental flexibility. Um, there's lower creativity. Um, and if this is prolonged, then you'll have hallucinations and delusions. Um, and it'll also lead to insomnia, um, which is difficulty in falling asleep or staying awake. Um, and also, um, there's something called cortisol. And so if you're awake for too long, then um, it'll fry your brain cells, which are necessary for learning, which is why so many students have trouble retaining information uh, from lectures um, when they're not having enough sleep. And so sleep is crucial when it comes to um, properly bo bodily and proper bodily and mental function. Um, and it's reported that if you're driving on five hours of sleep, um, it's the equivalent of drunk driving because your body alcohol concentration um, increases to 0.08%. Um, and so you can get a DUI for that. Um, so make sure you get some sleep when you have the chance and don't crash. Uh, hopefully you didn't fall asleep during my presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.